Today, I'm going to demonstrate how you can configure your Elasticsearch Java API client to send requests to Elasticsearch over HTTPS. The reason why this is necessary is because as of Elasticsearch version 8.0, when you spin up an Elasticsearch node or cluster, security is enabled by default, meaning that you need a username, a password, and a CA certificate to communicate with that Elasticsearch cluster from your client. All right, now let me give an overview of the containers that I'll be using for this demo. So we have two parts of this demo. We have the client, and in my case, the client is a Spring Boot application, and this is a container or the configuration for that application. And then I have a setup container here for Elasticsearch that essentially generates the certificates, and those certificates are going to be used in the cluster itself. So here I have the cluster that has three nodes, ES1, ES2 and ES3 are the three nodes that I'm going to be using. So the end goal here is to have the Java API client in my Spring Boot application make a request to Elasticsearch and the request I'm going to be making is to add a document to an index and that request is going to be done over HTTPS and I'm going to configure the client by providing a username and password as well as a certificate authority certificate in that client. As I mentioned earlier, we need two things to make this happen. We need credentials in the form of a username and a password, and we also need a CA certificate. Now for the credentials, I'm just going to use the built-in Elasticsearch user called Elastic, and the password I'm going to assign is this one in the end file, and I'm assigning it into this environment variable. Now one thing I wanted to mention about that Elastic user is that I'm only using that because this is a demo. That user has super admin privileges that user is a super user so i would recommend in reality not using that instead create a user and give that user permissions according to that user's responsibilities so for example in this case let's say my client only needs to perform creates writes updates and reads and they only need to do that for specific indexes then i would create a user and assign them permissions that fit this client's responsibilities now for the ca cert we are going to use that certificate that was generated during the setup phase. So if we come in here, we can see that we generated a CA certificate here in this zip file. And so the CA certificate resides inside Docker at this location. We need to take that CA certificate from Docker and put it on our file system and then add it to our class path for this project. And I already did that. So what you want to do is you can use this docker cp command, then provide the name of the Elasticsearch container that you want to use. You can use any of them because they all have the CA certificate. And then next, what you want to do is copy that to this current folder. That's why I have a period here. And if I do that, we see that here it is, it was just copied. So that's how you'll copy it from inside Docker onto your file system. And then from there, add it to your class path. In this case, I'm using Spring Boot. So anything in this resources folder is automatically on the class path. So I put that in there. I've done this earlier. So I was just showing you how you can copy that onto here. So I don't need this here anymore. So I will delete that. Okay, now we also need to make sure that we have the Java API client dependency in our project. And the way we do that is that we add it to this Gradle file. And the name of the dependency, the dependency is this co.elastic.clients colon Elasticsearch hyphen Java. And the version I'm using is the same version as the Elasticsearch cluster that I'm connecting to. So my Elasticsearch cluster is 8.7.0. And I'm going to use the same version for the Java API client that I'm going to use. So let's see how all this comes together. I have a spring bean here called Elasticsearch config, which is just a configuration file that generates the bean the Elasticsearch client that we're going to use. Here, we can see where the magic happens. I am going to use all the things that we've created earlier, so the CS certificate, the username and password to configure this REST client so that it's able to send an HTTPS request to Elasticsearch. So starting from the top, we create this SSL context and we inject the CS certificate, which is in our class path here, CS cert, and then the basic credential provider I'm using the username, Elastic, and the password that I set earlier in the end file. And then now for the REST client, I am using the host name, which is ES01. And if you come back to Docker Compose, we see that I only exposed this. This is ES01. That's the only one that has a port open. Um, no other one 
has any ports open. That's the reason I use ES01. If I use ES02, that would, wouldn't work because no, none of his ports are open. Neither are ES03s. And then from there, I just passed in all that config into the REST client transport. And then I created the Elasticsearch client from that REST client transport. One thing I wanted to mention about this password is that here you see it's referencing the spring.elasticsearch.password name, but this is not anywhere in the application properties. I only have the username one, but that's where the spring boot magic happens is because when I come up here in the application, spring is able to take this environment variable type naming where you have like uppercase and underscores and convert that into the spring type naming, which is lowercase with the period. So that's why me using this notation here works. So now let's use this Elasticsearch Java API client in our application to make a request to Elasticsearch. So here I have a basic uh, controller, Spring Boot controller, and it takes in a payload that has a first name and last name and saves it to an Elasticsearch index called employees. This index does not exist, but in Elasticsearch, if the index does not exist, Elasticsearch will go ahead and create it for you. And if the Elasticsearch document is taught successfully in Elasticsearch, we'll get a response back with the ID for that document. And then we're going to send back that ID to whoever called this endpoint. All right, so I have a script here that's going to spin up all the containers that you need. So let me just run that. Okay, that's done. So let's see if the Elasticsearch cluster is ready. So let's hit the Elasticsearch endpoint. So indeed it is running. Now let's hit the endpoint in our application, in our Spring Boot application that is going to call Elasticsearch and save the employee to Elasticsearch. So here we have the payload that we want to send to our app. Let's send it. And indeed we see that the Elasticsearch document was created and the ID was returned to us. So we can verify this by checking in Elasticsearch itself in the employees index and we see that employee was saved in Elasticsearch successfully using HTTPS. 